this is always more nerve-wracking when you can spot familiar faces in the crowd. Um, I'm Jess. Um, as Jacinta said, I'm the CEO of Joseph Mark. We are a digital product design studio here in Brisbane. We were founded in Brisbane. We're very proud to stay in Brisbane. Um, and Jacinta, I just I love what you're doing with Creative Mornings. And thank you for the invitation. I'm going to wing it a little bit this morning because. I don't know, I think I had my phone there ready to go with all my notes and it's not a good look so I'm just going to wing it. Um, hello. <laughs> I've already stuffed it up, no. I'm also going to leave plenty of time for questions at the end. Um, survival is a strangely difficult topic. Um, when Jacinta gave me the list of things to choose from, it stuck out for me. I think um, talks that I've done in the past, past experiences, have, uh, I guess, encapsulated certain stories of survival. And yet, I became kind of intrigued by the definition um, of this word. And our good friends at Wikipedia describe it like this. It's quite a crude definition of the word. If you can't see the words, it's, it's a noun and it's to stay living. And I started to think about what that means to survive and to stay alive and to keep on living despite what you might be going through, or despite wanting to give up. And that how could we, if we if we want to survive, sorry, if we want to thrive and not just survive, then how do we live better? So this is a, um, whoop, we got it up there? This is a passage that I've had saved to my phone for quite a long time. Um, and I'll read it out because you might not be able to read it. The master in the art of living makes little distinction between his work and his play, his labour and his leisure, his mind and his body, his information and his recreation, his love and his religion. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence at whatever he does, leaving others to decide whether he is working or playing because to him, he is always doing both. There's various philosophers that have been attributed to this, this passage. Um, and as I said, it's, it's a philosophy that I strive for in my own life. And I think that all of you uh, being in creative disciplines in your own lives, I think are oscillating between these concepts all the time and you're probably quite naturally always doing both, or at least I hope this is resonating for you in that way. His work and his play. We've all heard the saying, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. I think that's bullshit. I think we all know that work, that we work hard and that sometimes work feels like work and we can delude ourselves by thinking that if we're doing what we love, then we're not working, but we are, and we can celebrate that, and we can be proud of that, and we can achieve and feel the pleasure in having dedication and passion and purpose in what we do. We don't need to disguise that as a love for what we do, because sometimes, quite frankly, even though I think I love what I do and I do what I love, sometimes I fucking hate it. <laughs> His labour and his leisure. I think as artists and creatives, we all identify with the struggle. We thrive on the struggle. We thrive with pushing the boundaries and meeting barriers and overcoming them. And I think the typical archetype of the artist and the creative is, is in that struggle. We celebrate it. We think that that's where that's where all the best ideas come from, that we need to keep struggling, that we need to keep making it harder and harder for ourselves. 
and that we can't enjoy it. And as soon as we enjoy it, then maybe we just aren't going hard enough. But we need to enjoy it. We need to be able to step back. That's something that I'm learning not very well. But I take too much pleasure in the struggle, in working long hours, in um, feeling like I'm achieving something and I forget about the recreation and I forget about how, how I can take pleasure in, in what I do. This is a bit hard to move. His mind and his body. I'm someone that thinks a lot. Ben would say that I think too much and get caught up in my head way too much. And I think I've always, I've probably always prioritized my mind over my body. And then this happened, clearly I'm pregnant. Um, I wanted to make sure that that was obvious today. <laughs> um, because the, the thing about this is that it's actually given me um, a lot more appreciation for my body. This is the first time in my life, I think, where I'm not in control of what's of what's going on around me to an extent, well, completely. I'm completely unconsciously creating this human being and I think that's amazing and scary and this thing is surviving on my, my blood at the moment and, sorry, I just can't even put it into words. It's quite incredible um, and so I think for me, his mind and his body is... This, is... this is the one that I struggle with the most, but I'm beginning to appreciate. His information and his recreation, or his education and the space to play. Again, I think as creative people, we're naturally curious we're seeking new things. We want to meld new ideas. We want to repurpose concepts. We want to redefine the things that we're doing. And we find joy in that. We oscillate between these two very naturally. And finally, his love and his religion. I think we're extremely lucky people when we work in a field that feels like a vocation rather than rather than a job, and, sorry. <clears throat> this love for what we do, or love for our craft, or passion to pursue, it becomes, it becomes a form of religion, it's what we believe, we can't separate the two. But we are only human and we don't always, we don't always evoke this art of living easily and I think the thing about survival is that it evokes, it evokes passion and sometimes we don't have the passion. When we think about survival, we think about a word of threat. We think about overcoming something huge. We think about tragedy. We think about great loss, physical loss, financial loss, emotional loss. But I think the thing about survival is that it almost throws you into this new state of mind. It's almost like meditation. Everything becomes clearer when you feel under threat. And so how do we harness, when we're going through our creative process, how do we harness that feeling of needing to survive, of being able to thrive on an outcome that, that we couldn't get to otherwise if we didn't go through all of that emotion and we didn't seek that clarity? You know when something happens in your life, it happened for me about four weeks ago, my mum called me from emergency and 
your mind immediately goes to the worst case scenario and everything shifts into perspective. You get that clarity, all your senses become aware. You see the big things and you see the little things all at the same time. And that's how you survive. And that's also how we thrive. Really should have got my notes. <laughs> um, the thing is, whilst we can't always evoke this passion and whilst sometimes work feels like work and not like play, and whilst sometimes we really get too caught up in the labour of what we're doing, and while sometimes our mind and our body are so dis, dis separate that we can't distinguish between the two and we get confused, and while sometimes there's too much knowing in what we're doing that we can't enjoy, and sometimes when what we believe really stares in the face of what is love, it's at that time that we have an opportunity. And I think that we, as creative people, with this perspective that we have on the world and the way that we utilise our craft, have the opportunity to change things. We know that change is inevitable and we know that those who adapt to change are the ones that survive. And so, I think we need to... Shit, I've totally lost my track of thought. Okay, I can grab my notes, no, this is very interruptive. Basically what I'm getting at is, as a creative industry, we're under threat. That threat is, that threat is digital. And I think if I was to add anything more to this passage, it would be the analogue and the digital, and how we oscillate between those two things. I see this in creative friends and peers that I have and their need to get back to the tangible. Um, we see it in you know, the, rise of, the rise of crafts and the rise of handiwork and the rise of growing our own food and growing plants and getting back to nature and needing to absolve ourselves of all the, the saturation of pixels and, and of virtual realities and of, um, I guess, a digital landscape where we don't actually connect. Um, and so to survive, we, we, need to, we need to get back in touch with that reality. <laughs> I should have brought my notes. <laughs> Shit. This is me surviving this talk. <laughs> um, I'm going to finish because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow the rest of the time for questions. But, um... Oh, my mind has just gone blank. This is like totally witnessing my vulnerability right now. I guess what I want to finish with is... We've got, we've got a choice. And we can master in the art of living by choosing to live and choosing to take another step forward and choosing to choosing to put ourselves out there even though we know we're not well enough prepared um, and choosing to connect on that level when you know that everyone's rooting for you anyway. So thank you, I'm gonna leave it at that.